At the beginning of the 1990s, scientists were working on one of the world's greatest ecological projects, Biosphere 2. The project took its name from a giant structure constructed in the Arizona desert in the United States of America. It was a habitat totally closed off to the outside world, built mainly out of glass and concrete over an area of 13,000 square meters in the Arizona desert. It resembled a giant greenhouse in appearance. The plan was for a functioning ecosystem to be established in this giant structure, closed off to the outside world, in which biomechanisms were maintained by the water, oxygen, and nitrogen exchanges that serve as the basis for life on Earth. This ecosystem, which would function despite being isolated from the world outside, would also provide life support for eight human beings over the two years of the project's planned duration. But when the experiment ended and the doors were open, scientists saw that matters in this artificial habitat had not gone at all according to plan. The oxygen level had fallen to 14 percent, the same as being at about 5,300 meters above sea level. There had been sudden rises in carbon dioxide levels, while nitrogen levels had become high enough to damage the human brain. The system that provided clean water had become polluted, and 19 of the 25 species of vertebrate living in Biosphere 2 had died. All the insects that pollinated the plants were dead, the algae in the ponds had grown enormously, and the food plants were smothered by weeds and died. These were by no means all the catastrophes in Biosphere 2. The entire facility had become infested by ants, grasshoppers and cockroaches. In short, Despite all these efforts, it proved to be impossible to create in this closed system known as Biosphere 2 the balances that have been functioning perfectly on Earth for millions of years, and it was therefore impossible to produce an environment that was habitable for human beings, plants and animals. In the wake of the failure of the Biosphere 2 research, Professor of Population Joel Cohen and Professor of Ecology David Tillman summarized the lesson to be drawn from the study in these words. No one yet knows how to engineer systems that provide humans with the life support services that natural ecosystems produce for free. In the wake of that admission, one single question will be enough to free oneself from a perspective resulting from lazy thinking and familiarity. What would happen if all the life forms that perform the services in question on our behalf were to disappear? The answer is obvious. We could never survive. The harmony between the magnificent wealth of life on Earth and living things is the result of a special creation. And that creation belongs to Almighty and Omniscient Allah, which is described in the following verse. I take refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Among his signs is the creation of the heavens and earth, and all the creatures he has spread about in them. Surat Ashura, 29. Place of volcanic activity in the harmony. Terrifying tremor. A cloud of smoke and ash that totally blocks out the sun. Poisonous gases that kill living things. Temperatures high enough to melt iron and molten rock raining down from the sky.
People have always been terrified of volcanoes because these miracles of creation are, at the same time, deadly threats. Like everything in the world, Allah has created volcanoes on the basis of great knowledge and wisdom. Let us now examine some of the delicate ecological balances created by volcanoes under a number of different circumstances. They permit the emergence of fertile soil. The magma thrown up by volcanoes is in a very hot, dense, and viscous form as it leaves the depths of the earth. As it reaches the surface, it cools down and begins to solidify. As a result of this solidification, its structure changes and gives rise to the formations known as volcanic rock. This is gradually broken down by wind, rain, freezing and erosion, and turns into soil. In addition, volcanic activity is one of the main reasons for the formation of many minerals and precious stones. Copper, diamonds, iron, and granite are just a few of these important substances. Thermal springs. Thermal springs are water sources with healing properties that appear along fault lines in volcanic regions and are higher than 200 degrees Celsius in temperature. Thanks to courses of treatment using thermal spring water and hot mud, diseases such as rheumatism and sciatica, broken bones and fractures, skin disorders, physical and mental fatigue, stress and nervous tension can all be treated. Were there no volcanic activity on Earth? What would happen if there was no volcanic activity on Earth? Well, many of the substances we rely on in our daily lives and in industry would not come into being. They might perhaps be obtained artificially, or other alternative substances might be found. But that would involve a great deal of effort, brain power, and financial expenditure. In the same way, the hot waters and thermal springs that contain various minerals would not have formed. The earth would be very poor in minerals and it would be impossible for us to benefit sufficiently from the plants that represent our main food source. Our earth might well have remained a dead, barren planet with no surface features or atmosphere, just like other planets. What if there were constant volcanic activity on Earth? Now, imagine a world in which there was constant volcanic activity. What would such a planet be like? The answer is very short and clear. Life on such a planet would be impossible. Everywhere would be covered in red-hot lava, and all living things would be burnt to ashes. The poisonous gases given off by volcanoes would reduce the oxygen level, and the atmosphere would no longer be able to sustain life, and we would be poisoned and die with the first breath we took. 
Volcanic activities would cause constant earthquakes, and the Earth would no longer be a safe place for any living thing. Allah has created volcanoes, like everything else, on the basis of a sublime order and delicate balance, under the most appropriate conditions. Human beings' duty is to reflect on this sublime creation of Allah's and to see our Lord's might and turn to Him. I take refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of night and day, there are signs for people with intelligence. Those who remember Allah, standing, sitting, and lying on their sides, and reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, you have not created this for nothing. Glory be to you. So safeguard us from the punishment of the fire. The ocean currents. Lightning hitting the earth. Intense rains. Snow. Howling winds and cloudless drought. These are all climactic phenomena we witness on the planet we inhabit. The shape of the Earth, its orbit, the mountains, the distribution of land and sea, proximity to and distance from the sea, the winds and the oceanic currents are the main factors behind climactic diversity. One of these, the currents of the oceans, is defined as the movement in a specific direction of a limited mass of water. There is no doubt that Almighty Allah created warm and cold water currents for a purpose. He has surrounded us with much knowledge and wisdom to reflect on. Let us now look at one of these miracles and see the examples it provides. They produce climactic variety. Warm currents transmit heat by traveling from warm regions to cooler ones. Some warm currents consist of water from cold regions or else cool water from the sea bottom and despite the water temperature being 15 degrees Celsius they are still considered as cool currents in warm latitudes. They therefore reduce heat and decrease the oppressive effects of the air. The coasts play a role in desert formation. The reason why coastal deserts appear on the western edges of continents is cool ocean currents. However, this desert type is very different to very dry deserts with high temperature variations because the air is very humid in deserts of this type and temperature variations are unimportant. This makes it possible for a weak grass cover to form and for animals to graze on it. They increase biological diversity. Currents carry food and oxygen in the seas and thus increase the feeding potential and fish diversity. They also increase the number of seabirds and the species thereof that feed on these fish. Spores and various plant seeds are carried by the currents thousands of kilometers to different parts of the world. In 
the same way, plant seeds that adhere to icebergs are also carried to distant parts in the same way. They provide food for human beings. Almighty Allah manifests his title of Razak through the diversification of economic activity by way of these currents. For example, currents may directly affect cities' revenues. One of two cities on the same latitude may have a harsh climate, while the other has a moderate climate because of warm water currents. This, then, has an impact on activities such as agriculture and tourism. No rain is seen on the shores of various cities in South America under the influence of cool water currents, but in winter they permit the formation of a grass cover known as loma. And that vegetation cover made the development of animal husbandry possible. In addition, Seabirds living on the islands near these coasts depend on the food chains set up by cold water currents. The natural fertilizer known as guano these birds deposit on the islands is very rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and has been extracted in blocks since the 19th century, representing a significant source of income for the countries around the islands. If ocean currents were to deviate from the delicate equilibrium on Earth, temperature changes in the sea would happen very quickly. Oxygen and salt levels would change, and that would lead to the death of fish and other marine organisms. Climactic abnormalities would appear. Dense fogs and floods caused by severe rain could have lethal results. Climactic obstacles would arise. Temperate region plants could not spread to colder areas or tropical plants to other regions as much as they do today, and the frontiers that would be established in agricultural regions would mean that human habitats would not be as broad as they are now. As we have seen, warm and cold water currents heat or cool the air to just the right extent These characteristics expand the possible areas of human habitats on Earth, making it possible to obtain food and increase the variety of other species. It is, of course, impossible for such an order to have come about by chance. This sensitive equilibrium was established by Allah, Lord of the Earth and Sky. Soil, a miraculous treasure trove. Most people think that the soil is part of the Earth's crust, just a few centimeters thick, largely used in agriculture. Looked at more closely, however, soil has a very complex structure indeed. A wide variety of physical, chemical, and biological activities take place in this layer, which ranges from 20 to 30 centimeters to a few meters at most in thickness. The formation of the soil is a miracle all by itself. One of the most complex and interesting things about soil is that it forms by itself. 
This begins with the physical breakdown of rocks into smaller fragments. But that is not enough for soil to form. Among other factors, climate has a direct and indirect importance because it is climate which determines breakdown, dissolution, plant cover, and micro and other organism activities. Later on, under the effects of water, chemical breakdown takes place and the minerals inside the rock emerges. But these minerals are not soil in the true sense of the word. This material that we can refer to as broken down rock is inanimate. To put it another way, it is dead. Algae and grasses begin growing on this inorganic material that contains various minerals. The roots of these plants accelerate the breakdown of the main substance, while falling leaves and branches initiate the activities of the microorganisms that break them down. As plants lose their leaves and branches, and these mix in with the soil and are broken down by microorganisms, the organic material of the soil comes into being. Various types of plant can now grow on it. This process, which has taken about a minute and a half to describe, actually happens over millions of years in nature. The miracle of the formation of soil, with its sensitive and detailed equilibrium, once again shows us the perfection of the creative artistry of Allah, the sublime creator. Almighty Allah reveals this in another verse from the Quran. I take refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. A sign for them is the dead land which we bring to life and from which we bring forth grain of which they eat. Surah Yasin 33 Certainly, had Allah so wished, he could have created the soil at once, without going through all these transitional stages, in a form ready for agriculture. But our Lord creates everything with a specific chain of cause and effect in this world, a place of testing, and has created the soil in the same way. Almighty Allah clarifies this with an example in another verse. I take refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Do you not see how your Lord stretches out shadows? If he had wished, he could have made them stationary. Then we appoint the sun to be the pointer to them. Surat al-Furqan 45The soil plays host to many different species. There is a very closely designed and delicate relationship between the soil and life forms of various sizes. Plant, bush, and tree seeds, carried from elsewhere by the wind, gradually mix in with the soil and allow plant species to diversify. But this growth of plant life does not happen by chance. Every stage takes place under the supervision of Almighty Allah, who reveals this in a verse of the Quran, I take refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. The keys of the unseen are in his possession. No one knows them but him. He knows everything in the land and sea. No leaf falls without his knowing. There is no seed in the darkness of the earth, and nothing moist or dry which is not in a clear book. Surat al-Anam, 59 Underground water, vast water resources under the soil. As you watch this film, millions of cubic meters of water are being carried from the oceans to the atmosphere, and from there to the land. We, and all the other life forms on Earth, can only survive thanks to this giant water cycle and purification system. If we tried to organize such a system, we could never do so, not even if we were to use all the world's technology. 
Yet water, the prime necessity for our survival, is provided for us free and easily thanks to natural evaporation and condensation. Rain is one of the most essential elements for life on Earth. During rain formation, water circulates between the oceans and seas, the atmosphere and the land. Water vapor that reaches the atmosphere in various ways condenses under appropriate conditions and returns to the Earth as rain, snow and hail. Almighty Allah reveals this about the formation of rain, which we have described only very briefly. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. It is Allah who sends the winds which stir up clouds, which he spreads about the sky however he wills. He forms them into dark clumps, and you see the rain come pouring out from the middle of them. When he makes it fall on those of his slaves he wills, they rejoice. Surat Arum 48 But not all the rain that falls goes to form above-ground water. Some permeates below ground when the conditions are right and gives rise to subterranean water. One of the miraculous features of subterranean waters is that they emerge completely clean and ready to drink from among different muddy layers of soil. This is most definitely one of Almighty Allah's countless blessings upon us. One example that our Lord provides on this subject in the Quran reads, I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Do you not see that Allah sends down water from the sky and threads it through the earth to emerge as springs, and then by it brings forth crops of varying colors, which then wither, and you see them turning yellow, and then he makes them into broken stubble. There is a reminder in that for people of intelligence. Surat Az-Zumar, 21. The Wisdom Behind the Creation of Underground Waters For reasons we have just seen, water that seeps under the ground does not immediately accumulate under the soil. There is a region above underground water known as the aeration region. The water collects here without being absorbed by the soil or rock fragments and without percolating even further down as the result of capillary formations. The way that this layer holds on to these water particles allows plants whose roots cannot extend down as far as subterranean regions to make use of this water. But what if there were no water particles suspended in the aeration region? How could plants meet their basic water needs in times of drought when there is no rain? They would all fade and die in times of drought, and there would be no brightly colored flowers and different fruits and vegetables on earth such as we see now. The winds that foretell the coming of rain. Wind. A natural phenomenon created by Allah with much wisdom. Allah reveals in one verse that He has created the wind like all the other signs of creation in order for people to grasp and reflect on His evident existence and might. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the creation of the heavens and earth, and the alteration of the night and day, and the ships which sail the seas to people's benefit, and the water which Allah sends down from the sky, by which he brings the earth to life when it was dead, and scatters about in it creatures of every kind, and the varying directions of the wind, and the clouds subservient between heaven and earth, there are signs for people who use their intellect. Surat al-Baqarah, 164 How do winds form? 
The warming of the air and movement in large masses gives rise to various pressure centers on the Earth. The pressure created by the atmosphere is not equal everywhere in the world. Air moves from high-pressure areas to low-pressure ones, like water running down a slope, and gives rise to winds. Almighty Allah describes winds as bearing good news in a number of verses. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Among his signs is that he sends the winds bearing good news to give you a taste of his mercy and to make the ships run by his command and to enable you to seek his bounty so that hopefully you will be thankful. Surat Arum 46
The wind has been created as a great blessing for human beings. What we must do is give proper thanks to Allah for this blessing and properly appreciate his might. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. If he wills, he makes the wind stop blowing, and then they lie motionless on its back. There are certainly signs in that for everyone who is steadfast and thankful. Surat Ashura 33 A Call to Reason We have witnessed many miracles of creation during the course of this film. Anyone who looks carefully will see many miraculous events, from his own body to the skies. But the important thing is to have the character to grasp and understand these miracles Because no matter how great or small a miracle may be, only believers can understand the existence and infinite might of Allah from it. What someone who sees and understands these miracles all around us must do is to give constant thanks to Allah for every blessing and pleasure. For people who are capable of using their conscience and comprehending the harmony on earth, the whole universe is full of reasons to increase one's love and fear of Allah. For that reason, people must at once turn to Allah, give thanks for all they have, and bind themselves to Him with an intense love.